if you're not getting richer today, you're the problem. Because the word is today, the rich are getting richer than ever before. And if you're not, it's because you're drinking from the straw of misinformation. If you're afraid today, it's because you got sucked into misinformation. You haven't gone macro, you haven't studied history. And exactly what is going on in Europe today, that's what happened at the Weimar Republic, you know, which gave rise to a man named Adolf Hitler. And this is our time today. Now, the yeah. good news is, if you follow what I said in this book here, you'd be richer. I'm in the same market all of you are at, but I just don't follow the same stupid advice from poor people, like my poor dad. They're just highly educated poor people, or they're salespeople. If you're afraid today, you're following bad financial advice and education. I'm not terrified of, but I think we're going to go down with this one, is who stole my pension? You know, the idea of government workers like my poor dad, school teacher, police officers, firefighters, they all have a government pension. And what they're finding out today is those pensions are empty. You got ripped off. So I wrote this book here a while ago with Ted Sedell. Ted Sedell is the biggest whistleblower in the, in the pensions. And the reason this book hits home for me is after I, was, after I got through flying in the Marine Corps, my friends, my poor dad wanted me to fly for either Hawaiian Airlines or United Airlines. And I said, I'm done flying. He says, no, 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 but airlines have a good pension safe, safe, secure job. And the reason this book is, hits home to me is my friends who flew for United Airlines found out the hard way their pensions were stolen. So they're back at work right now. Because if you think it's the economy that's the problem, you're solely wrong. The problem is your education. Guys like me are making more money hand over fist. I don't pay much in taxes and I'm quite happy with the economy. So the economy actually takes place inside your head. You have to go back in time to see history. In a recent talk that has sent shockwaves through the financial world, Robert Kiyosaki, best known as the author of the influential book Rich Dad, Poor Dad, has sounded the alarm about an impending financial catastrophe. In his own unique and candid style, Kiyosaki warned investors about a giant crash coming and urged them not to panic. But instead of doomsday prophecies, he presented a different perspective, one that is both intriguing and thought-provoking. Kiyosaki's primary message is simple. Crashes are the best times to get rich. In a time when market volatility and economic uncertainties have left many investors jittery, his words carry a distinctive weight. He encourages his readers not to dread the impending drop, but to see it as an opportunity, as good news. Kiyosaki's rationale is grounded in the idea that after such market crashes, the Federal Reserve will be compelled to print billions of dollars to bolster the markets, a move that will inevitably swell the nation's debt and erode the value of the dollar. Kiyosaki's warnings have become more frequent in 2023, with him highlighting the gravity of the situation by comparing a Great Depression to an even more ominous scenario, a global recession. In his assessment, the world is currently experiencing the latter, characterized by an array of distressing consequences, including bankruptcies, soaring unemployment rates, and a rise in homelessness. Furthermore, he suggests that retirements are under threat in this recession. But amidst this dire outlook, Kiyosaki seeks to illuminate a silver lining emphasizing that this crisis offers opportunities. He points to the increasing prices of assets like gold, silver, and Bitcoin as indicators of deteriorating financial conditions in the United States. These assets are, in his view, a haven for the poor and middle class who are being pushed deeper into debt. His message is straightforward. Don't get poorer and he urges his followers to make a modest investment by purchasing a single silver coin, emphasizing that it costs only 30 bucks. For Kiyosaki, this is the first step toward getting richer in turbulent times. Kiyosaki's message resonates with a broad audience, but it also raises several crucial questions about the state of the global economy. First and foremost, the issue of wealth inequality cannot be ignored. It's a well-documented fact that wealth disparities are widening across the world, and this poses significant risks to economic and social stability. 
Kiyosaki's advice may be particularly appealing to those who feel that they're on the wrong side of this growing wealth gap. Furthermore, Kiyosaki's emphasis on the psychological factors driving financial decisions is firmly grounded in behavioral economics. Fear and misinformation often lead to poor financial choices, and by addressing these issues and providing solid financial education, individuals can make more rational decisions, especially in times of economic turbulence. In terms of his macroeconomic perspective, understanding the larger economic forces at play is indeed a valuable skill. Historical context is also crucial, as Kiyosaki points out. The lessons learned from past economic crises can help individuals prepare for the future and make informed decisions. Robert Kiyosaki's warning about an impending market crash and the opportunities it may present is a stark reminder of the complex economic landscape we navigate. While Kiyosaki's message may evoke mixed reactions, it undoubtedly encourages individuals to critically assess their financial strategies, gain financial knowledge, and consider alternative investment options, particularly in the face of economic uncertainties. In doing so, Kiyosaki's advice might just prove to be a guiding light for those looking to navigate the tumultuous financial seas. In response to Kiyosaki's views, another expert, Mark Moss, shared his thoughts also. Listen to him. You know, I think what a lot of people do these days is they don't want to build their own education. Maybe they don't think they need to, and maybe let, let's, let's, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. A lot of people don't think they need to because they can just outsource their thinking. Today, everybody trusts the experts, right? Rather than uh, rely on uh, information that they could build themselves. And so when we're talking about the financial system specifically, um, and everybody has their pensions, you know, through their work, they're investing through their 401ks and they're having their matching funds, which by the way, if your employer wants to match your funds, that's free money, go ahead and take them up on it. But for the most part, you don't want to be in their game, right? That's their game. And that's where they extract wealth from. So, and I want to give you a couple of just uh, concrete examples of this. So. If, if we look at your financial advisor and, and whether at Charles Schwab or Fidelity or wherever they're at, and they're going to tell you a couple things. They'll say like, um, it's not time timing the market. It's time in the market. You should just always stay in because it always goes up, but not necessarily as Robert was making the case earlier. And if we go back through history, we can see just looking at the S&P 500, for example, from 1968, the market crashed. And it took all the way until 1992 just to get back to even 25 years. So if you're trying to retire in that 25 year gap, it was going to be very painful. And again, from 2000 to 2015, it dropped in 2000, took 15 years just to get back to even. So while your financial advisor might be factually correct, they're a little intellectually dishonest by telling you that. And these, as Robert was making the case, they're really salespeople just trying to sell you the products they're in. Here's the real sinister part to this, and this is where you really need to be paying attention because uh, where we're going is not the same as where we're coming from. We are at the end. We're witnessing an 80 to 100 year sovereign debt crisis. We haven't seen that happen in the West before. And what that means is that in the United States and the, the rest of the West and developed world, we have gotten to a point where our debt to GDP is over 125%. When you get to that point, there's four options to get out. You can default, but no government with a money printer will default. You can steal the wealth through taxation, but even if America took everybody everybody's money, they wouldn't have enough to pay the debt. So that's not going to work. Um, really, the only option is to print money, right? That's the only option. And they do something called financial repression. And this is a very key piece you all need to be aware of. The IMF put out a paper in 2015 explaining how financial repression works and what they do is to Robert's point, they take over the pensions, they take over all these retirement accounts, and they put them into the assets they want them to be in. You don't think they are, but what they do is by keeping bond yields lower than what inflation is. So they'll let infl inflation run hot, keep printing money, but keep bond yields low. So you're making your two, 3% on your bonds. You think you're doing okay, but you're really losing money that way. And so that's the sinister part. And if you just outsource your thinking, you listen to the sales reps that tell you what to do, you're going to be stuck in that game. And so I think what Robert likes to do as well as I do is let's play outside that game. We can build wealth and assets outside the game. We don't have to play along with that. And I think that's probably the big picture that people should be aware of. Mark Moss, an expert in the field of finance, provides valuable insights and a different perspective that complements Robert Kiyosaki's views. 
His commentary sheds light on the idea that many individuals have become reliant on outsourcing their financial education and decisions to so-called experts. Mark Moss urges people to take more control of their financial education, highlighting that building one's financial knowledge is essential. Moss recognizes that in today's age, many individuals tend to entrust their financial decisions to professionals, often without fully comprehending the implications of their choices. This outsourcing, while seemingly convenient, can come at a cost. It means that individuals may not be fully informed about the strategies being employed on their behalf. In terms of pensions and retirement accounts, he emphasizes that these accounts often become tools for governments and financial institutions to steer individuals' investments into assets they prefer. This may not align with the best interests of the account holders. Moss makes a compelling argument about the dangers of this approach. He draws attention to the financial repression tactic, a concept that involves keeping bond yields lower than inflation rates. This results in individuals believing that they're making a decent return on their investments while losing purchasing power over time. The core of Moss's argument revolves around the idea that individuals who outsource their financial decision making could find themselves trapped in a system that may not serve their long-term financial interests. He advocates for taking control of one's financial future, becoming educated about financial markets, and making decisions that align with personal financial goals. Moss and Kiyosaki seem to share a common belief in taking a proactive approach to financial management. They both encourage individuals to break free from traditional financial advice and consider alternative investment options that can potentially protect and grow wealth outside the confines of a system that may not always prioritize individual financial success. Mark Moss's views provide an additional layer of understanding and emphasizes the importance of personal financial education and autonomy. His arguments resonate with those who seek to escape the traditional financial system and explore alternative avenues for building and preserving wealth. Together with Kiyosaki's views, they paint a picture of a financial world in which individuals are empowered to make informed choices and navigate the complexities of the market with greater confidence.